Hi, and welcome back to our channel. As we all know, the Omicron variant of the coronavirus has now become dominant in the United States. In fact, we are now well past the holiday peak, and the cases are dropping nicely and dramatically in many parts of the country, including New Jersey, where I live. Having dropped precipitously from their pinnacle about two weeks ago, the cases are still very high, however, and I get COVID phone calls from patients almost every day. Omicron is milder than the previous strains, but it is still filling our hospitals and causing severe disease in many patients. As such, I think it is important to understand what has changed with this wave, both in terms of symptoms and especially treatments at home. Compared to Delta, Omicron is far more contagious, but it usually spares the lungs, avoiding severe disease. Its incubation period from exposure to symptoms is shorter at about three days, and the symptoms revolve around the upper airway. Sore throat, cough, fatigue, and runny nose are more likely than high fever, loss of smell, and shortness of breath. The symptoms last about a week, and in most people, resolve at that time. In fact, days 7 through 10 of the infection are the crucial time points when the symptoms either go away or progress. And once they progress, the mild phase of Omicron gives way to the same long-ravaging process we have learned with Delta and before. These patients develop pneumonia that is as bad as the other variants and can progress to high oxygen requirements and the need for a ventilator. We do see less of these people now than what we had seen in the months prior, but it is important to understand that these processes are still taking place in the hospitals everywhere. Unlike before, we now have two very effective treatments to fight COVID at its start, and that is what I would like to discuss next. The first new treatment is Pfizer's antiviral pill called Paxlovid. Designed specifically to fight COVID, it can fight all the variants so far, and it works by stopping viral reproduction in your body. That means you have to take it early, within five days of the first symptom. It works exceedingly well, preventing over 80% of hospitalizations in the landmark study. There is another drug from Merck called Molnupavir, but that one is not nearly as effective and I would avoid it unless no Paxlovid was around. The important issue with Paxlovid is that it interacts with many common medications, especially statins for cholesterol and blood thinners. As such, every patient needs to check this list, which I'll link to in the comments below, and discuss their unique situation with their doctor. Many of these drugs could be safely held for a few days, but not all, and that is why a doctor conversation is crucial here. Also, Paxlovid is still very hard to get. It is dispensed by the US government to specific pharmacies, the list of which can be found at this link. You can type the name of the county you live in here to get the local pharmacies that carry it. If you are calling your doctor to get the drug, do the legwork first and find out which local pharmacy has it, as your busy doctor may not have the time to play detective here. Again, you need to take the first dose within the first days of your infection. The second treatment now available, and one that we can take up to 10 days from the onset of symptoms, is an Omicron-specific antibody treatment called Sotrovimab. This is very different from the previous antibodies, such as Regeneron's product, a fact that hit the news recently as the government has now stopped distributing the latter. Regeneron's antibody worked well against Delta, but has no effect on Omicron, whereas Sotrovimab does very well against the new strain. It is an intravenous infusion that one gets either in an emergency room or a specialized infusion center, and it needs to be set up by your doctor. It is very effective as well, and I now have multiple patients who have praised its almost immediate positive effects on their well-being. The issues with Sotrovimab are against scarcity and very strict use criteria, as described here. In general, Paxlovid should be used in a moderate to high-risk person, while Sotrovimab should be reserved for the highest-risk individuals. Both of these treatments can be used in both vaccinated and unvaccinated individuals, it is a perceived risk in the setting of documented infection that determines the need for those medicines. Which brings me to the last point. As we have all seen, many vaccinated people have caught Omicron, but it is important to note that the vaccines have kept them out of the hospital. Omicron may be milder, but it is not necessarily mild. Our hospitals got hit hard with this wave in January, and many of those folk are still in the hospital. 
Largely, severe Omicron is the disease of the unvaccinated. So please, especially if you're over 50, overweight, hypertensive or diabetic, vaccinate and stay away from our ER. Thank you.